Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video, uh, another video in our series of videos dealing with hypothesis testing, uh, and another video on the chi squared goodness of fit test, uh, is going to uh, try to find, is trying to go, we're going to try to use the chi, chi squared goodness of fit test uh, to see whether uh, some observed distribution okay uh, fits a predefined distribution and in this case does is is there evidence to suggest that the observations uh, fit a normal distribution actually i suppose the real question we're really asking from a hypothesis perspective is is there evidence to suggest okay does the observed distribution uh, not not conform to a normal distribution if that makes sense okay and there's going to be a number of things that we're going to have to do here and a number of assumptions that we're going to have to make uh, let's just keep in mind that when we're dealing with a normal distribution uh, that the variable that's associated with normal distribution is a continuous variable uh, and it extends to minus infinity to positive infinity okay uh, so when it comes to actually us looking at our observed variable we're going to have to take that into consideration okay the example that I'm looking at here is uh, I suppose stock returns okay and uh, that's the return that's been observed with respect to a particular stocks closing price uh, over a particular period of time and more importantly with respect to this particular stock uh, there were 69 observations okay so there were 69 observations with respect to the returns uh, the returns could have been between let's say 10 10% uh, 10 and 20% 20 to 30 30 to 40 40 to 50 50 to 60 60 to 70 70 to 80 okay and what we observed over this particular period of time was that two of the turns uh, returns two of the observed returns uh, were returns that were reported between 10 and 20 percent now these intervals exclude the upper bounds but are inclusive of the lower bounds okay uh, and also another example is that 25 of the observed 69 returns uh, were returns that made between 50 and 60 percent okay on the previous on the previous reported uh, closing prices okay and uh, these are obviously fictitious values there's obviously great fluctuation situation here and great returns uh, in certain cases with respect to this particular stock but they are fictitious but just to motivate this particular example okay uh, now before we get started in relation to uh, these are our observed frequencies down here okay uh, and let's say that this particular variable has a number of levels of measurement associated with it in this particular case the number of levels of measurement for this particular variable is that there's one two three four five six there's seven let me just test that again one two three four five six seven so the seven levels of measurement i'm just going to say in this case that k is equal to seven to indicate that the seven level of levels of measurement with respect to this variable okay so the variable is categorical in the sense that you can fall into this category or any one of those particular seven categories okay and the question that we have is is this does this particular does this obs do these observed frequencies okay follow what we'd expect to happen if uh, there was a normal distribution okay so what we're going to do is this is that we're going to change this particular this particular these particular categories now they are ordinal okay we're going to change them into a continuous variable where the continuous variable extends to negative infinity and positive infinity and the way we're going to do that is we're just going to we're just going to assume that this category here okay this category is all observations that are less than 20 okay so this category is going to represent all observations less than 20 okay so actually this captures all observations uh, that are less than 20 with respect with respect to returns so it even be into negative returns okay uh, and this observation this category here will be between 20 and 30 so that remains the same okay that remains the same this category is going to remain the same this category will remain the same this category here will remain the same this category will remain the same but this category here we're going to assume that it's 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 all observations greater than okay greater than or equal to 70 okay so it's all observations bigger than 70 uh, or it's all observations uh, greater than or equal to all observations greater than or equal to 70. so you can actually see that the intervals now okay, is a continuous interval ranging from values that are less than 20 all the way through to values that are bigger than or equal to 70 okay and the question now that I'm sort of going to try to ascertain is we know our observed frequencies okay uh, can we build our expected frequencies what would we expect to happen yeah with respect to a normal variable yeah uh, that had these particular intervals associated with it 
okay uh, so actually really let me just draw a little diagram okay with respect to the first variable here okay or the first interval which is less than 20 what we're really asking is that if we had a normal distribution okay okay a normal distribution that had some center point let's say the center point is let's say the center point is some mu value we'll just say x bar since this is sample data here that has some uh, center point x bar and we just assume that x bar is, is greater than this particular value here uh, less than 20 is any value that is less than 20 is over here okay and let's say that that's 20 here okay uh, so the question is what is the area to the left hand side of 20 if that makes sense because that would be based off a normal distribution but to do that we'll have to use a transform okay we'd have to standardize this variable okay standardize okay let's standardize okay standardize okay using the transformation z is equal to our observations okay our upper bounds of our classes x minus some mean relative to some standard deviation s okay in other words what we'd actually end up with is we'd end up with a set of z scores okay z scores for the distribution okay that has these particular upper bounds associated with the classes okay and that's what i want to do first is i want to create some z scores okay okay for each one of these particular upper bounds okay in other words i want to find the z score for the upper bounds and then i'm going to calculate the area less than them and then i'm going to calculate the area between them for the actual intervals themselves and once we know the area between them effectively what we have is the probability okay uh, of an observation being within the interval okay and we know how many observations there is in total so we can actually calculate what we'd expect to happen what proportion of the 69 would we expect to be in this particular interval so ultimately what we're going to have is we're going to have our z scores we're going to have our area our area below the z scores we're going to have our area our area within the intervals okay uh, and then finally what we're going to have is we're going to have our expected frequencies so we're going to have our expected frequencies okay these are our observed frequencies and we're going to calculate our expected frequencies and then we're ready to go with the chi squared goodness of fit test now don't forget the chi squared goodness of fit test the test statistic the chi squared test statistic is it's the difference between the observed frequencies and the expected frequencies but more importantly it's the square difference between the ob uh, 